Hello my beautiful friends, it's Amanda here and it's time for another episode of Trash or Treasure. If you haven't seen the first Trash or Treasure, I'll link that. Definitely go and check it out and you can kind of get a feel for what I'm doing here. Basically, instead of just sharing disappointing products, I'm going to tell you something that didn't work for me and then I'm going to give you a suitable alternative. And I always try to make the products as similar as I can and close in price. Sometimes the treasure product will be a little bit more expensive, sometimes it'll be less expensive. I'm just trying to get in the same ballpark. I have a lot of stuff to share with you today, so let's get started. I picked up a couple of these Trend Matters polishes. That's the Sinful Colors collaboration with Kylie Jenner. And I have to say, these were really disappointing for me. Um, first of all, it wasn't matte. It was kind of a satin finish and it is just loaded with glitter. This is the shade VI Peach. And as you can tell, it's filled with glitter, which something definitely can be matte and glittery, but it's just not really, it doesn't come off looking very matte. But that's not my problem with this. My problem was it took four or five coats for this to be opaque and it didn't self-level so it ended up being really chunky and uneven and it just it just looked horrible on my nails. And I'm not a professional by any means but I'm pretty good at painting my nails and this just looked like complete junk on my nails. What I would recommend if you're looking for a matte nail polish, especially from the drugstore, are the Essie mattes. These are slightly more expensive. I think these are like eight or nine dollars, whereas the Sinful Colors ones are three, I think, two ninety nine. But these are way better quality. They self level. They look great when they're finished, and it doesn't take you four or five coats to build up to opacity. So, sorry, I don't have anything against Kylie. I love Sinful Colors, but I'd say trash trend matters and treasure the Essie mattes. All right, let's talk about brushes. I love makeup brushes. I have way too many of them. <laughs> I love trying out makeup brushes and I love affordable makeup brushes. I would say 80% or more of my makeup brush collection are affordable brushes. There are definitely great brushes out there that you don't have to spend a fortune on. I was sent these Sally 6 Plus brushes as PR and from the moment that I washed them, and I did use them, I used them for about a week, and I just had such a horrible time. As you can, I mean, can you tell? Do you see the like brush hairs shedding out? Every time I wash these or use them on my face, they shed everywhere. And these don't feel soft, they don't feel nice, they're not particularly good brushes. And I really don't like to say that when a company sends me something, if I don't like their product, typically I just don't talk about it. You know me, I'm not about negativity, I don't want to bash anyone. I have not tried any of their other brush lines. They sent me a 14 piece brush set and I just, some of them were better than others, but particularly these big powder brushes are just I don't even have words. So when you're looking for affordable brushes, there are tons of them, tons of great affordable brushes. Elf makes fantastic affordable brushes. They're all between one and six dollars a piece usually. They hold up well, they're sturdy, they're soft, they work wonderfully. These Wet n Wild brushes are fantastic. I think I paid like a dollar ninety-nine for this brush. It's super soft, it hasn't shed on me, it's pretty. Get this. Real Techniques. These are slightly more expensive, but even so, they're less than $10 per brush. Some of them are more like $5 per brush. And these are some of my favorite brushes. There are so many good affordable options. Don't feel like you have to buy a cheapo shedding junkie set in order to have makeup brushes. You can get great affordable brushes so don't go on wish if you pay a dollar a brush on wish you're gonna get a junk brush i'm sorry invest the two dollars more and get one of these trash or treasure 
All right, let's talk about concealers. I have a couple of concealers here. The IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. I have gone back and forth on this and I have just settled. I just don't like this. It is really full coverage, which is great, but it's so thick. It's really kind of dry and especially in that under eye area, it tends to look really crepey. It's hard to blend out. You have to use the tiniest amount and even then, you just have to blend your life away. You know, for something that's so expensive, I would expect it to be a little easier. Surprisingly, a great alternative is this Maybelline Master Conceal. This is a fraction of the price. You get a huge amount in here. This stuff is super creamy, really easy to work with, and it covers like crazy. This is such a good concealer. If you're looking for a high coverage concealer, Try the Maybelline Master Conceal, especially if you have dry skin. This is going to work so much better for you than the Bye Bye Under Eye. Bye Bye Under Eye, trash it. Maybelline Master Conceal, total treasure. I have two mascaras I want to talk about today. The first I got in an Ipsy bag, and it is the X-Rated Mascara from Smashbox. I actually really like Smashbox mascaras, but this one, it's just the wand that's the problem. So this is what the wand looks like. See how it's really spaced out and it kind of has like three rows of bristles that go around? With all that space in between the bristles, it really just clumps my lashes right together and I get these really stuck together, chunky looking. I don't get this beautiful fanned out look that I want. It just makes me look like I have four big like lumps of lash and I'm just, I'm really not a fan of it. However, the Smashbox Full Exposure Mascara is awesome. I love the brush, I love the formula. I don't know why they felt the need to come out with this when this is already so good. So X-rated mascara, sorry, trash it. Go with the regular Full Exposure Mascara, beautiful, definitely a treasure. Now let's talk about a mascara from Tarte. I just want to preface this by saying the Lights Camera Lashes Mascara from Tarte is one of my favorite high-end mascaras that I've ever tried. I've gone through several tubes of it, I put it in one of my giveaways, I love that mascara. However, this one, this is the Tartist Lash Paint. Now the lid on the packaging on the tube is really, really beautiful, however, the packaging is part of the problem for this, for me, because I don't know if you can tell. I'm going to open it for you. When I first opened this, I thought that I broke the tube. Do you see that? What in the world? Why? I mean, like, it looks broken. Why is it like that? It just makes everything, all of the mascara itself, just clump and chunk and glob up around the end of the tube. And it's really hard to open and close. It's just, it's a nightmare as far as packaging goes. I know some people really love this. If you love this, then use it. Like if, it, if you like it, use it. But for me, I just, the packaging is a deal breaker. There's a way more affordable alternative that still has really cute packaging. It's seriously a fraction of the cost and it is a beautiful mascara. It's the Lash Princess Mascara from Essence. Look how cute the tube is. Like I just set this out on my vanity. I don't even put it in a drawer because it's so cute. As far as the bristles go, the brush design is pretty similar. They both have long, thin, tapered wands. Let me show you. So this is the Lash Princess and this is the Tardis Lash Paint. You see that they both have these long skinny wands. I think the formula of the Lash Princess is much better. It's much easier to work with. I just, I just way prefer this one over the Tardis Lash Paint. Now, like, like I said, Lights Camera Lashes is great. If you want a Tarte mascara, if you want a high-end mascara, go with that one. But the Lash Paint trash. Essence Lash Princess, diamond in the rough, total treasure. 
While we're talking about eyes, let's talk about something that's been really trendy this summer and that is blue eyeliner. I really wanted to try out a bright blue eyeliner and I picked up a few from the drugstore to test them out. This L'Oreal one in turquoise and I thought it was such a beautiful color. I was really excited to try it. I put it in my waterline and before I was even standing up from my chair at my vanity, it was completely washed out of my waterline and like dripping out of the corner of my eye in a most disgusting manner. <laughs> it works a lot better if you put it on your actual lid, but as far as the waterline goes, it is a complete no-go. I don't see how it would work for anyone. I don't have very sensitive eyes, I don't have very watery eyes, and it just fled from my eye as quickly as possible. Now, this one from Jordana, which is much less expensive at the drugstore, worked 10 times better. It still did eventually disappear out of my waterline, but it wasn't like flooding out of my eye in like turquoise tears streaming down my face. And let me show you how similar these are. This is the L'Oreal Silka Semi Liner in turquoise, and this is the Jordana Easy Liner in tantalizing teal. Those are straight on dupes. So besides wear time, I also like that the Jordana pencil is retractable so you don't have to sharpen it. Plus, it's a couple dollars cheaper. I just think that this is the way to go. L'Oreal, trash. Jordana, treasure. If you saw my hauled it how was it video, then this will be no surprise to you. It's the Tartlet Tees palette. I just, I just don't like this. I'm sorry. I love Tarte. I love Tarte. I mentioned two Tarte items today, but I really do love Tarte. It's just this particular palette, the shimmers are really disappointing. They're very patchy. They're very flaky. There's very little color payoff. The mattes are quite good. I, I will have to say that. The mattes are good, but the these two shimmer shades in the middle are just... They're very underwhelming. If you want a beautiful purpley palette, then spring the extra couple bucks and go for this one from Too Faced. It's the Boudoir Eyes palette. It has sturdier packaging, has a bigger mirror. You get three more shades in here than you get in the Tartlet Tees palette. And it has a great range of mattes and shimmers ridiculously good quality just as all Too Faced shadows have been for me. If you're on the fence or if you're like me and you just haven't had good luck with Tarte eyeshadows, I would say trash the Tartlet Tees and go for the Boudoir Eyes instead. I feel like I should put out the reminder and standard disclaimer that just because I don't like these products or they didn't work for me doesn't mean that they're bad. It doesn't mean that I dislike the companies that make them. A lot of these are made by companies that I really love and some of my favorite products come from. And of course, if any of these things work for you or if they're your favorite things, then that's great. We all, we all have different tastes, we all have different needs, and I hope that you will form your own opinions and not be offended by mine. I just wanted to remind everybody of that because, like I said, a lot of these are some of my favorite brands, but not every single thing is going to work perfectly for everybody. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!